Good evening, YouTube, Booktube, the world. This is Johnny. Time to make a video. It's been at least a day. It is October the 23rd, 2019. It is 5.50 in the evening here in West Michigan. Like I said, I'm only about 15 minutes from Lake Michigan if I dro drove out there, but uh, it's kind of cold and windy today. Plus, like I said in past videos, I don't go out to the lake, Lake Michigan, that much. Uh, I used to go out there, I'll take photos with my cameras, but I stopped doing that. Uh, I don't really leave the house much unless I really have to. Anyway, I'm not going to ramble. I want to what I want to do on this Wednesday night here in West Michigan tonight is I want to show you the thrift store books, used books I have acquired recently and books I've gotten from the library used bookstore where I volunteer, the Book Nook. As I mentioned, I didn't volunteer Monday at the Book Nook this last Monday because we have new ceiling lights were installed so it should be really bright and uh, lots of light in there so when I go back Friday this coming Friday to volunteer from 10 to 1. First of all what I read today on this Wednesday is I read this morning Living in Union with Christ Paul's Gospel and Christian Moral Identity by Grant Miskell. Yeah, as a Christian, we are living in union with Christ. We are participating in the life of the Godhead. That uh, you hear about, as a Christian, about the gift of eternal life and receiving eternal life when we repent of our sins and put saving faith in Christ. We're united to Christ mystically, and then we are united to Him. We are in Christ, and Christ indwells us. And that's our identity, Christ living within us and expressing the life of God through us in Christ. So I, was, I read that today up until new time. As I told you, th this book is based on lectures that were given at, at a Reformed Theological Seminary in 19, no, not 19, 2018 in Orlando. Florida and I found these lectures online so I listened to uh, the third lecture this morning and following along with the book and then this afternoon I've been reading Ducks Newbury Port by Lucy Elman I've read 547 pages I plan to read this tonight yesterday I read last night as my wife watched the first ball game of the World Series. I, I'm not really into baseball, but I sat there and I read Mary McCorkey, the first queen of journalism by John Norris. Really enjoying this. Um, highly recommend it if you... It's, kind of, it's like I read last night the part... She was friends with the Kennedys, Bobby and John Kennedy and uh, Teddy Kennedy and uh, the, the Kennedy clan and I read the part last night where John F. Kennedy gets assassinated and and then how LBJ, Lyndon B. Johnson got his presidential election and that whole time period it was very interesting if you were into it's like a snapshot it's very brief of that time period and uh, how she covered it as a journalist because she was on these political campaigns, the McGovern, Humphrey, Nixon, Goldwater, LBJ, Kennedy. She followed in this campaign, and she was on the campaign trail with these presidential candidates, and she wrote a column. And so it's very interesting if you're into that kind of thing. I also read today a little bit of Prisoner of Love, Jean Jeanette. This is translated out of French. What this book is about, from what I gathered, is that there, uh, starting in 1970, Jean Jeanette, a petty thief, prostitute, modernist master, spent two years in the Palestinian refugee camps in Jordan, 
Always an outcast himself, Jeanette was drawn to this displaced people, an attraction that was to prove as complicated for him as it was enduring. Prisoner of Love, written some ten years later, when many of the men Jeanette had known had been killed and he himself was dying, is a beautifully observed description of that time and those men, as well as a reaffirmation of the author's commitment not only to the Palestinian revolution, but to rebellion itself. So that's what it is. It's autobiographical. It's very, like I said, he wrote it 10 years after that experience of being in a Palestinian refugee camp. So it's kind of, it's just, like I said, I got this, it was 50% off. I have other writings by Jean Jeanette. I, and so that's why I bought it. So I looked at it today, this afternoon. As far as my diary, October 2019, I ended on page 863 for the year 2019. Tomorrow is October the 24th, a Thursday. So, now, the used books. Well, I went to thrift stores yesterday, uh, just local where we live, and I picked up this novel by A.G. Cronin, The Stars Look Down. This book about life, ugly, beautiful, ironic, heroic, and despairing. A book about people, about miners, their land, their lives, their passions, their fights, their scars. It is a book deep in human sympathy to stir the conscience of a nation. A rich and r rare panorama, Sunday Times. This is a British writer. Uh, A.G. Cronin, doctor and novelist, was born in Cartwas, Dobinshire in 1896. On his return from World War I, he graduated from honor, with honors from the Faculty of Medicine at Glasgow University. Later, he took up practice in London, and to declining health, he started writing. So he wrote, I just got this, it was like 60 cents. I have another novel of his in our library. Uh, it, uh, my wife said she read it years ago. It was called... Oh, I just saw it here. I don't see it now. Oh, here it is. Song of Sixpence is in our library. By him. Then I picked up this this thing. I, I kind of like the cover, the ragged trousled panthropus by Robert Trissel. What this is is it's kind of basically. I don't really know what it's about. It says the the ragged trussled panthropus tells the story of a group of working men who are joined one day by Owen, a journeyman prophet with a vision of a just society. Owen's spirited attacks on the greed and dishonesty of the capitalist system rouse his fellow men from their political quietism. The ragged, trazzled panophilothoposis is both a masterpiece of wit and political passion and one of the most authentic novels of English working class life ever written. And then I picked up a John Motormeyer, um, Motormeyer, was it Motormeyer? Was it, was it uh, Monomeyer, Paradise Postponed. I had this already, I didn't know if I had it. It's like John Mortemeyer, Paris, Paradise Postponed. I had this already. So I'll put it in the roving library in the van. Then I picked up this used hardback, a second edition, Russia, A Short History by Michael T. F F Florskisky. And this was, it was, it's kind of marked. It's like a textbook, but I wanted a summary. I collect books on Russian history and it was only like, you know, 90 cents. Then I picked this book up, Lincoln and the Power of the Press by Howard Hoser. I found out I already had this. 
I collect books once in a while on Abraham Lincoln, the Civil War, the Reconstruction, the Gilded Age, you know, 19th century American history, 19th century American Christian history, and things like that. So, I just bought it, it was 90 cents. I'll give it tomorrow when I volunteer at the Book Nook. Friday, I'll take this and give it to the library, bookstore, the Book Nook. Then I picked up this book, Normandy, 44 D Day, and the epic 77 Day Battle for France by James Holland. This book is brand new. I just came out and I don't really collect books on the Second World War, but it was 90 cents. And I do have books like on Hitler and the rise of the Nazis in Germany and the Holocaust. And I do have overviews of the Second World War. I have a lot of books on the First World War, a lot of books on the Spanish Civil War, the American Civil War, the Revolution, the American Revolution, and things like that. But it was only 90 cents, it was brand new, so I bought it. And then I picked these up at the Book Nook last Friday, last week Friday. I showed you this one I've been reading, Marigret and the Pickpocket by Seminon. This is translated out of the French, his name is George Seminon, translated from the French by Niall Ryan. I got a bunch of these. I'm just going to show them. I'm not going to just tell you what they're about. I have this one, which I'm reading. And then I picked up his Magret's Rival. Um, Magret loses his temper. Magret, the tavern by the, the Sheen, the, the Seine River there in Paris. Magret, Headless Corpse. These are all by Sanan. Madame Megret's own case. Sanan Mingret on the Riviera. Megret in Holland by George Sanan. These are all translated out of the French. This is one I had already by him. The late Monsieur Gallet, Inspector Mingret, Mingret Mystery. And this one uh, by Sanan Magret at the Hotel Majestic. So I picked these up. I collect these and I found a whole bunch at the Book Nook last Friday. And then I picked up, oh, I have this one too. I have this one already in our library. So then the Magret's Pipe. These are like short stories. Then I picked up the best of Edward, Edward Alvey, who was an an, e an ecologist, a cons uh, conservationist. He wrote a lot about the West. I have a, I collect his writings. This is like the best of his writings, edited by Edward Alvey. And I really love his writings. And his, I have a volume of his, his letters. And I just like the way he writes. So I got this. I bought this for a dollar. Then this is Erica. Denson, she a, was a South African writer or an African writer. I think she was from Kenya, if I remember. Maybe she was from Kenya. Well, she was born in Denmark. After her marriage, you know, this is, she was famous for Out of Africa, that film, you know, and the novel. But this is her Winter's Tales. Uh, Isaac, uh, is Isaac, uh, Isaac Denison. Then I picked up this book of poetry by W. B. Yeats, very very um, edition of the poems of W. B. Yeats. And then I picked this book up called The Art and History of Books by Norma Lavera. Lavery. It's just a book about the history, the art and history of books. You know. It's, it's a big paperback. I don't know, it was only a dollar, so I picked it up. I collect books on books and the art of bookmaking and history of books. Then I picked these up at a thrift store last week. This is a novel by Max Berry Company. I collect his novels. I have two other novels by him. Jennifer Government, and then I have his novel, uh, I have another novel by him. And then I picked up 
uh, Sherman Axes Reservation Blues. At first, I thought had I thought I had this in our library. Then I realized I didn't. <coughs> and when I looked at this copy, it's a signed copy. See, it's signed. So I have this. This is his most. This is his most famous novel, Reservation Blues, by Sherman Ax Axley. Then I picked up uh, the Dyer's Hand essays by the poet and uh, W. H. Auden. That's a picture of Auden. These are like essays, uh, lectures he gave uh, on different things here. Then I picked up this tra travel memoir by Jonathan Rabin, Arabia, A Journey Through the Limerith. I have a big stack of his travel memoirs downstairs in the lower level. He's written all kinds of travel memoirs. There's a picture of him in the back. And then I picked up this book, Dennis Judd, The Lion and the Tiger, The Rise and Fall of the British Ragi. And this book I picked up for a guy who comes into the book nook, an older gentleman. He likes this writer, Ivan Doig. This is the novel, The Eleventh Man. I got this for a guy who comes into the book nook. He's always looking for this writer. And I have all his novels already downstairs in the lower level. But I picked this up for a guy who comes into the book nook. Then I picked up another travel memoir, Chasing the Monsoon, by Alexander Fretcher. I like travel memoirs, travel books. I, I don't know why, because I don't like to travel. <laughs> I don't really like to leave the house unless I really have to. But I like reading memoirs, travel memoirs, travel books about faraway places, exotic places. But like I said, I like reading about Russia, reading about books, reading about Pauline theology, union with Christ. This is like about the working class, uh, British socialism, you know, reading books about the Second World War, D, the Normandy invasion, D-Day, reading books about Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln, the Civil War, reading about American politics, and reading... Uh, Ducks Newburyport, Union, uh, Ducks Newburyport, Lucy Elman. Writing in my diary, watching the birds. We're in the, in the middle of, of autumn. The leaves are changing. It's been cold and windy. The, thing, the leaves are falling. And life just keeps flowing by. So this is a Wednesday night. It's October the 23rd. I thank you for the new subscribers. Thank you for the comments and... Tell me what's on your mind, what you're reading, how you're doing. I hope you're all doing well. And yeah, I know I, I mispronounce things, names and titles. I'm kind of, I have a speech impediment. <laughs> I always kind of reluctant to make videos, and but I notice before I start making a video that I've been making videos going on four years and you've all been patient with me and my my slurring of names and titles and but I realize I've watched booktube a long time and noticed that there are a lot of people who have the same problem I do so I don't feel like I'm the only one who has a hard time with pronunciation uh, I wish I had a silver tongue I wish I had clear articulation I wish I uh could just be brilliant in these videos, but I come off. I always consider myself on the wrong side of this of the railroad tracks. I'm from the ghetto. I'm from the slums. I'm from the trailer park. I'm from the. Uh, I'm just from another world, <laughs> I suppose. Anyway, not saying anything that's bad. I mean, we're all made in the image of God, I'm not saying it's wrong. I mean, I can, 
I just concern myself that I grew up among poor, uneducated people. I don't think anybody I grew up with finished high school. I know none of them went to college. And I don't think any of my brothers and sisters ever went to college. Now, I went to Bible college and I went to seminary, but I'm not really educated in the truest sense. Now, my children are. Our children are highly educated and are very smart and they do, they're doing really well and I'm all thankful. We're all thank the Lord Jesus for all that. But here I'm rambling. I'm just going to close once again. Thank you for being patient with me. Thank you for all your comments. Thank you for your subscription and hope you're all doing well. I don't know if I'll make another video. Uh, I might do another video, but I want to get all these used books down to the lower level, getting them off the table in the, in the living room. And now I will close. And until next time, bye.